Suppose you're a famous builder, known for building the tallest skyscraper on the entire planet. You haven't held this record for your entire life, no, you've re-earned it over and over, always building to surpass the next tallest building from your competitors. Business is going as usual until you learn of a new rival who's just built an even bigger building than your now former record holder. You've been through this before though, so you're not worried. But the public is not so confident, and your investors are feeling doubtful. What if this is it, the absolute tallest skyscraper? Now, as a world-famous builder, you could simply do as you've always done and construct a taller building. But it would be nice to have some guarantee, some proof, that you're capable of such a task. Then you won't be subject to the public scrutiny each time another competitor comes around. So you set out instead to construct a proof. After thinking for a bit, you come up with a few assumptions to guide your proof. Firstly, you are confident in your ability to construct a one-story building. Of course, this is the foundation of any taller building. More importantly though, you know that, given any pre-existing building, you can always add one more floor to it. So you could, say, increase a two-story building up to three stories, and then increase that building up to four stories, and so on. Generally, a building of height n implies a building of height n plus 1 can be built. With these tools, you set out to build a proof. Now, proving directly that there is no such thing as the tallest skyscraper seems a bit daunting, so you start by taking a step back and looking at how you got here. At no point have you held the record of the tallest skyscraper for more than a few years, but you always come back to scale up your building to an even larger size. So perhaps this is what you can prove. Given a building of an arbitrary height, you can always scale up your building by some factor to exceed your competitors. For simplicity, you only consider whole number scalings, such as increasing a two-story building to four stories by doubling its height. Still, you're unsure how to prove this statement directly, so instead, you suppose that it is not true for some arbitrary building. If you can disprove this statement, you're in business, and you'll have proved that all buildings are outbuildable. To begin, you have your building of some height A and your competitor's building of some height B. Assume that there is no whole number scaling factor that can make your building taller than the other. In other words, if you have a scaling factor n multiplying with your building of height A, then all buildings of height NA must be less than B by this assumption. In some sense, this height B is then like a ceiling, an upper bound for the buildings you can scale up. However, there could be an even stricter upper bound, one taller than all of your buildings but with as little tolerance as possible, just barely exceeding the tallest possible height NA. For easier reference, you say that this building has height S. Again, this is the minimum height that still exceeds all other heights NA, but is perhaps more strict than the upper bound of height B. Now, imagine you take away A floors from S. In other words, reduce the height of S by the height of A to get a building of height S minus A. Naturally, this building must be shorter than S, since some floors have been taken away. But remember S was the height that acted as the least tolerant, or minimal, bound for all heights NA. So any height less than S cannot act as a ceiling for all heights NA. There's an exception, a scaling factor N for which NA is taller than S minus A. But if some NA is taller than S minus A, then it's also true that NA plus A more floors should be taller than S. You're increasing both buildings by the same height A, so the order of their heights should be preserved. Notice here that this building of height NA plus A is equivalently a building of N plus 1 times A. In other words, this building is one you can build, since it's within your ability to construct one more floor from a building that already exists. And more importantly, this building's height exceeds S, which was supposed to be a cutoff height for all possible scaled buildings. So it cannot be that S is truly the upper bound for all of your buildings. You've just shown it to be outbuildable. That is, you've found a contradiction to the original assumption that your building sites are bounded above by some height B. With this proof, you've silenced the public. No more will your ability be doubted, and there's no longer a building too tall for you to outbuild. Of course, this also means that there is no building too tall for your competitors to outbuild, but you don't mind the challenge. Now, as you might expect, there's something else going on here. 
This is a story about a builder and a very, very tall building, true. But underlying it is a lesson in math. In fact, you've just proven what is known in real analysis as the Archimedean property. Here's how it goes. Given two numbers a and b, where a is positive, there exists a whole number n that can multiply with a to exceed b. Sound familiar? With our builder, we imagined a and b as heights, and n as some scaling factor for our building, but the idea is exactly the same when we take those elements away. We can even prove it in the same way. I'll go a little faster here, since now we know how the story ends. First, assume the claim is false. For fixed values of a and b, no such whole number exists. n a is less than or equal to b for every n. Then you can say that all these n a are bounded above by b, meaning they will never exceed b. But then it should also be true that there is some other number that bounds the n a from above with as little tolerance as possible, perhaps more strictly than b does. We'll call it s for easier reference. See where this is going? Now, because a is positive, s minus a is less than s. And since s was the smallest upper bound of the set n a, s minus a can't be an upper bound. So there is some n for which n a is greater than s minus a. Then also n a plus a is greater than s, which we can rewrite as n plus one times a is greater than s. But n plus one should be a whole number since the original n was. So there's a contradiction here. Thus, the original claim has been proven true. As you can see here, the logic flows on this abstract level as it did on the more concrete level. Of course, I put together the analogy to be this way, but I'd like to think that maybe Archimedes had this idea of what is the biggest thing in mind when he first tried to construct the property, a question that's really quite fundamental to our understanding of the universe around us. Speaking of, how can we be sure that this property tells us that there is no such thing as the biggest number or the tallest building? That was the original question to answer, after all, yet the property seems to talk more about scaling things up than it does counting. But we can let a equal 1, equivalent to what I formerly called the smallest possible building, and just n, the scaling factor, remains. Then, this says that there will always be a whole number bigger than any number you choose, so there cannot be a limit on how far you can count or how high you can build, even if you build just one floor at a time. Not at all surprising, but stated this way, it's indisputable. One other thing. What's nice here with the numerical statement of the property is that we can move things around without losing any truth. So we can move, say, this n to the right side here, and then we see that for any a and b, where a is still positive, there's some whole number in n that can divide b to be less than a. With this, just like we can be certain that there's no biggest positive number, we can also be certain there's no smallest positive number. We can only ever get closer and closer to zero. Which is a pretty interesting result, isn't it? I mean, we started with the question of what is the tallest building, and by formulating our answer to that question in a specific way, we can also discover the answer to a seemingly opposite question, what is the shortest building? Or even more generally, what is the smallest thing? It turns out this application of the Archimedean property, going from a statement about very large numbers to a statement about very small numbers, is actually quite useful too, perhaps most notably with the concept of convergence with sequences and functions. If there's any upshot here, it's to try and build a tool for finding an answer rather than building the answer itself, whenever it seems reasonable to do so. See if any decisions you've made can be generalized or abstracted to a broader degree. In mathematics, we might call these more general tools instead lemmas, that we then apply to some larger proof. As you build these kinds of lemmas, you could end up finding truths in unexpected places, just as we did here.